two, three. Welcome to round one of Black Phoenix Alchemy Labs Tournament of Champions. Are you ready to crumble? Because we're going to critique some of your favorite perfumes. I'm Tom. I'm Galen. And welcome to our... Tournament of Underdogs? Freshly minted new series, Tournament of Underdogs! So how does this work? So how this works is, uh, well first of all, how this works is you watch our previous video in which we explain how this works. Mm. Um, but for now, what we're going to be doing is looking at the very first perfumes on our bracket of underdogs. These are the uh, among the 50 worst selling perfumes in BPAL's general catalog. Doesn't mean they're not good, doesn't mean that they don't have fans, uh, doesn't mean we're going to discontinue them, uh, it just means no one's buying them, and we're going to pit them against each other and see, um, when randomly paired, which underdogs excel and which ones trundle back to the stable, back into obscurity, but perhaps with a few new fans. Maybe. Maybe. So, let's uh, <clears throat> dive right on into uh, round one of our tournament. Uh, following the bracket, uh, we are pitting Roses, Pearls, and Diamonds against Rakshasa. <laughs> what I love about this is that Rakshasa actually sounds like it could be a wrestler. Yes. Except for if Rakshasa was a wrestler, like in the WWE, then the depiction would definitely be racist. But um, the perfume is quite lovely. We're going to smell these uh, one at a time in the bottle and then on the skin, and then we're gonna decide with our two dumbass subjective opinions um, which one is uh, preferable. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, competitor number one. Roses, pearls, and diamonds. Just so everyone knows, this one is from our fairy tale collection, Marken. Is that right? Um, and it's Roses, Pearls, and Diamonds refers to a famous French fairy tale uh, diamonds and toads, toads and diamonds, uh, tadpoles and cubic zirconium. Um, and anyhow, I will, won't tell you the story right now because time is of the literal essence, but the scent notes for roses, pearls, and diamonds are red roses, dazzling crystalline musks, and pearlescent coconut-tinged forests. Felt like one of the British Bake Off announcers about it like that. I have seen this one shouted out repeatedly by people as a classic favorite. Um, anytime someone's looking for a rose scented perfume, this is among the first ones mentioned. Yeah. It is delicate, it's original, but it has great gobs of that, uh, you know, wonderful, recognizable rose robustitude. I'm not getting so much of the coconut in the... Rose is a diva. It's a diva fragrance for divas to wear. Um, but, so in the, as such, in the bottle, a lot of the other notes aren't, like, super uh, singing to me. It's lovely. What, what are your thoughts? I mean, I smell the coconut you do? in there. Um, but it, it is blended nicely to where it just kind of, you know, it's they're hanging out together. Roses, pearls, and diamonds are friends. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice kind of, like, squishy, damp red rose to my... Uh, to my knowledge, which in the fairy tale, she, uh, the the young girl um, is under a spell where every time she speaks, uh, jewels and flowers tumble out of her mouth. So you would imagine that this is a rose that has fallen out of somebody's mouth accompanied by jewelry. And then the competitor, the challenger, Rakshasa. So I did some research on Rakshasa. Just kidding, I have my computer right in front of me. From the description on our page, it says, This haunting, exotic scent is named in honor of the shape-shifting demons from Hindu mythology, uh, sandalwood with rose and patchouli. Now these were randomly paired, but I love, I saw lots of interesting synchronicity in how the pair-ups ended up happening. We're, it's like a rose versus a rose here, folks. Mm -hmm. You can't say that the playing field is not even. And then if you go look at the Rakshasa Wikipedia page, you will find out that at least we appear to be correct in the reference that we're drawing. Rakshasas are also called man-eaters. That's just really all I need to know. 
in order to uh, judge this wonderful scent. So sandalwood with rose and patchouli. Three fairly recognizable stalwart perfume notes that are in this perfume. It's a very different kind of rose experience, though. It sure is. It's smoky and mysterious. It's a definitely like a kind of a bolder rose and a kind of, to me, a more of like a dried rose. Mm -hmm. Drier, spicier, uh, warmer. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Yes. It's got that kind of like tart, more of that tart rose note. I mean, that's the, the patchouli is, you know, bringing up the thorn in the rose, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is when we've talked about before, when you smell perfumes side by side that have a similar note, ultimately all you end up being able to smell is the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, oh, these two are the same with just like a little hint of, uh, usually what that means is the difference stands out side by side. So, um, any thoughts, just personal preference wise of the two from the bottle? No, what because are your I like them both. Galen is. Going I'm already to be, doing it. Galen's going to be the I like them both judge, and I'm going to be the ruthless, relentless, unlikable. But you have to admit, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do my job. Um, tough choices judge. I'm the tough love judge. I have to say, out of the two, that roses, pearls, and diamonds is the easier wear. That's the one I think that is you could wear more often in more like mixed environments. Um, but if you were going to eat a man, or you were going to fantasize about eating a man, um, or just like this is the just is a make good... Make someone think that maybe you have eaten a man or <laughs> would. Uh, Rakshas is definitely like a more special occasion, like go get them tiger type of scent, you know, less public transit friendly, I would say. But like, who cares about that anymore? I would so, put that on public transit. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you would not. Okay. Yes, I would. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna try them on, and we're gonna you know, see what happens. So whichever one that we end up selecting, we'll just simply advance to the next round and face off against a new competitor further down the line, many episodes from now. And then the other one, like nothing is going to happen to it. You know, like this is purely just for fun. Please don't send any threats. Um, you Please can, stop crying. Please do send bribes. Um, this is not like a fair competition. Smelling my roses, pearls, and diamonds. To be honest, I, I'm a rose perfume lover, and of all the B-Pal rose blends, neither of these two are really that much on my radar. I have my own, every, every rose, has its rose lover has its own, has their own special, you know, this rose gets me perfume. And I'm not really sure, I'm, you know, that either one of these is really me, which I guess is, you know, how it is for a lot of people, which is why they're underdogs. That being said, Roses, Pearls, and Diamonds has this like fresh quality, like it really smells like something picked from the garden. And it has this beautiful fragility that I think is a really lovely thing to advertise about yourself, even if it's a lie. It just smells wet. I love it. It does. It's just, it's a very sweet musk. It is a musk. I it, like it, I like that musk. It is a musk. And my favorite musk is one that tricks me into liking it because generally like a lot of musk heavy blends like musk by itself. I love it in concept, but on the skin I'm always just like I think something about having the musk with the coconut and orris, it really makes it something special versus like just, you know, a, true... a musky rose. It's like a there's something much more sweet and like dry. It's just it's interesting. Musky Rose is what they used to call me on the vaudeville circuit. Now I'm moving over to Rakshasa, which is more like, this is what I think of it like, this is more of like a Renaissance Festival Rose to me. Um, it's kind of scrappy and decadent and the petals are just kind of like tumbling open because maybe it's a bit thirsty. Yeah, it's dry. There's like smoke in Warm. the air and people like, you know, screwing behind the tent and you can hear them but they're technically in private so you don't acknowledge it you know all of those memories I mean it is dry it's a drier it has a bite to it it's robust I don't know how many times I can say the word robust in one video but two rose blends 
Rose Bust. Rose Bust. That was my partner working on the vaudeville circuit. This is a really, really, really tough choice. And we don't have all day because we are constrained to our normal 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I looked up the hashtag tournament of underdogs on BPAT or on uh, Instagram and Twitter, and there are no posts for either of these cents yet, so we don't have any input there from people. And I looked on the bpal.org forum at Scent Reviews to see if anyone had posted anything since we announced that we were doing this, and they really hadn't. So no one really showed up for either of these scents in a formal way. Uh, I know that um, they both got some shout outs in the comments here and there where we were posting this stuff, but I'm just saying it would have been so great right now to go and see, like, you know, what folks had to say one way or the other because now we're truly left to our own devices in terms of judging this so if you had to pick one right now based on your purely subjective opinion which one goes on to the next round which one has legs to carry it further in the competition i'm so sorry i am picking roses pearls and diamonds that's the one going ahead yeah okay i like them both it is just calm down they're both great, and especially as like someone who's obsessed with patchouli, I'm amazed that I turned down Rakshasa, except I really like Roses, Pearls, and Diamonds. You know, like, okay, so here's the deal. Um, my judgment, um, first of all, I'm going to say that there are some perfumes that maybe I like or that I would wear, um, but in terms of what I think is more of like an original creation that other people might be excited to discover. I also have to say roses, pearls, and diamonds because I just think that anyone hunting for like a rose note would, would not have necessarily found a blend like that before. Whereas mm -hmm. with Rakshasa, I think it's gorgeous and I probably, I think, would rather wear it, but it's also something like an effect that I think could be created by blending other scents or you know, that someone might arrive at on their own um, blending a perfume. Um, it is a really wonderfully blended rose patchouli sandalwood, um, but those components are accessible to people, and like overall as a cumulative experience, I think it's just less original as an artistic creation, and I know I'm saying that in the presence of our perfumer who made both of them, so I am complimenting you, <laughs> Elizabeth, on um, both of them, but one of them I think, and I know that Roses, Pearls, and Diamonds also has a lot more supporters just from the comments we did see. So as a wary nod to those of you participating in the tournament to that extent, I will say I hear you and I lift you to the next round. So did a ding ding. Leaping straight into the next matchup in round one, we have Magmel versus Vice. Okay, so, you know, Vice as a concept <laughs> and as a scent inspiration really speaks for itself. Magmel, in case you didn't know, Mag is- Mag who? Exactly, uh, from Irish folklore. In fact, because it's Irish, it probably means I'm saying it wrong. Um, and Magmal is a spiritual realm in Irish mythology um, that I really don't have time to talk to you about. It's, uh, but on the, our, our, our page, it's, the product page says, The Plane of Joy, eternal reward for a lifetime of valor and glory. We'll see. And the scent is the warmth of amber, the puissance of white ginger, and the clarity of verbena with fresh green grass, lush sage, and cleansing droplets of summer rain. Whoa. And then Vice says, voluptuous and indulgent, a deep chocolate scent with black cherry and orange blossom. I know that this is a very beloved scent among a lot of people who were shocked to see it in the underdog ranking. Um, and Magmel, I'm sure, has its champions, and there's a certain thing where anything that's like related to anything Irish has a lot of people who are instantly like very protective because of their heritage, which I would say in an Irish accent, but I can't. I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> so in the bottle, um, the Magmel, these are two very different scents matched up together. Yeah. Um, one different sounds sizes. like it's very uh, clean and uh, 
bright and uplifting. Oh yes, ooh. It just feels like being like rinsed clean. Um, you get a bit, that summer rain is in there. The amber is sweetening it up. The ginger kind of like stabs you in the back of the eyeballs, but like very delicately little pinpricks. Same with the verbena, the grass is in there. Something about that like mineralic rain note with the green grass just is like, I know. I think like two of my wrinkles just smoothed out. I'm like, like I'm ha just like I'm on a beautiful walk on a summer's <sighs> eve. And there's just like a hint of sweetness to it that like enhances like reality, so it takes it out of the natural world and into this like idealized uh, glamour glow filter, sparkly bokeh effect type walk through the meadows. Oh, wow. I don't even think I've ever smelled this one I don't before. think I have either. It's just like really bright and crisp and clear and I'm, the hills are alive with the sound of magmel. 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 If I say magmel you, five you, times in the mirror, does it- However you do it? it. Or do I get killed with a hook? <laughs> and now for vice in the bottle, which is our uh, deep chocolate with black cherry and orange blossom. Oh, don't make me choose. Don't make me choose. Oh my god. Being this is dangerous. Waterboarded in maraschino cherry juice. <sighs> but like, I want to die. This is like super rich and dark and luxurious. I'm not getting the orange blossom here, but I can easily, I can see how, especially in the bottle, because chocolate and cherry both tend to dominate in the bottle, which makes it really hard to blend these scents. Yeah. Because like often you hand someone something, like when we're vending, and it just doesn't smell in the bottle the way it will on the skin because if the oil is too potent in the bottle. But I, I believe you're in there, Orange Blossom, and we will find you. Oh, that's heaven. Or is it hell? Or is it magma? <sighs> just kidding, that's the other one. Blind answer right now. Preferences just from the bottle smell. Ah! Do it. Speak your truth. I don't know. Okay. I, I, chances are I just probably wouldn't, <laughs> as, a, as a, what I wear, I probably wouldn't wear Vice. I would probably be more inclined towards Magmel. I don't wear a lot of chocolate stuff. I know. Um, I'm in that stage where my preference is going to go to the last one that I happened to smell because that's the freshest in my brain, which is unfortunately the way I think that a lot of people make choices, including voting. We're just gonna try them on and see what we get. Okay, so first I'm gonna smell the Magmel because that was the first one we described. Oh. It makes me wonder if it has some of that hay note that we were discussing in our last, um, in the menage a trois video. I, it's like you get a sensation of stepping on like wet foliage and smelling it. But there's something like bright and shiny about the air. This is like, it makes me f feel like I'm like tripping on shrooms or something a little bit and like outdoors walking around and everything sparkly. Wait, what are you smelling? Magmel. Oh, I thought you were smelling vice. Oh no. That's why I'm just like, what are you talking about? Why it's does a whole smell different, outdoors to you? Whole different nightclub, okay. sweetie. On the skin, I'm tracking the amber, not so much the ginger and the verbena, although I guess that's part of the freshness. Definitely the green grass. I think I'm really getting like the ginger, the verbena, sage, the grass and the sage. It's just like, it's very clean and crisp on me, kind of like um, fresh linen, sort of. Yes, um, yes. But different, you know? Yeah. The problem is... It's spicier. Clean is not a way that I generally aspire to smell. Um, if anything, I like to be clean, but then smell dirty. That's what brought me to Bee Pal. I mean, this is um, unmistakably a positive experience that I'm having with Magmel here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I am gonna switch over to Vice. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm getting, oh yeah, hold on. I've just got more of the Verbena wafting in. Okay, interesting. There's a commonality between these two blends, which is like some citrus element, but obviously that's kind of the only difference. Vice smells dirty. It smells filthy. Like you track something in from the outside and you're like, like what is it? Like it's not bad, but it's like, there's definitely a like, my space has been polluted corrupted by possibly toxic elements that I can't stop sniffing. It's kind of turning funky on me. It is weirdly funky in the bottle. I mean, I've seen this advertised 
by fans as like something that's really gourmand or whatever you know like it's the chocolate it's the cherry yeah there is something weirdly funky about it i'm not really sure what that is because like when i first put it on it was it was more of a like the chocolate and the cherry were really coming through i think maybe the orange blossom is coming through and kind of changing things yes it's really um that's what it is because the orange blossom is has like there's like a bitterness to the it. bitter yes okay that's because it now I'm I'm smelling something. It's like a little more, I don't know. Yeah, bitter and it's definitely strange. like strange. It amps the kind of like potential bitterness in the chocolate and the cherry, and there is kind of like this like this bitter edge to it. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that it's so completely intriguing. And if someone walked past me and they were smelling this, I would do one of those like like stare after them things, and you'd be like, over here, hun. Pay attention to yourself. We're in public. No, really. Like, it's a head turner. <sighs> um, that, you know what? It's the orange blossom. Uh, it, it's giving me Campari vibes. Now that you smell it. The funkiness. Mm. Think about it through the lens of Campari while you're smelling it. And it's like that. It's got a, like a, an edge. You think of orange blossom as being like a fragile note that like imparts like some kind of like, you know, fresh ethereal, you know, but also um, orange blossom and orange peel, etc. cetera. Um, there is like a melancholy quality mm -hmm. to these scents. They're acidic, they're bitter. There's like, an, like a romantic ache to it. So going back to Magmel, so that I'm being fair, Oh, yes. Yeah. Comparing them side by side now, the sage I'm getting. I have to say that it, this, while still clean, um, the linen quality is kind of like dissipating and I'm really left with kind of like a more um, green and robust, like herbal yeah. carpet. Yeah, I'm it's getting lush. And it's way more of a verbena yeah. on me right now. And I really like that because I, I haven't really found a lot of verbena stuff that we've made that, that really like... Uh, has the verbena note shining the most so that this is nice on me and it smell yeah all right so this is another instance where nobody posted any hashtag tournament of underdogs posts about either of these and there are no recent forum reviews of them there are plenty of old ones just dozens people love both of these you know and scanning there i see a lot of you know at least echoes of stuff that we've liked about both but no one stepped up to particularly stump for these two, even though they were displayed on our lineup as, you know, er, like early episode scents. So we are truly left to our own conclusions about choosing which one goes on to the next round and which one hit the showers. So how, what are you thinking? What have you, what are you deciding? Magmel. No offense to Vice, which actually, um, because, you know, it got funky on me for a minute, and then it kind of, it smoothed itself over, and the, the notes kind of started blending with each other, and then I'm like, oh, okay, I get this as a blend, and I like it, but I think in terms of, like, what I would wear, I, the magma is really interesting just because of the verbena, and I don't normally get a lot of that in some of our other stuff. Um, all right, so that puts a lot of pressure on me because I either have to choose the one that you chose in order to have like a consensus and then we can move on with our lives. Or I choose the other one and we're left with like a horrible tie and no input from the rest of the world and for how to satisfy it. But the problem is, is that my vote for this matchup actually is vice. Oh. I can't live without it. It's um, mellowing out, the bitterness is receding. I'm getting more interplay with like the sweetness and the richness and the bitterness. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to fight. No. No? Oh. No. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> I mean, be careful ding, ding, what you ding. wish for. It. Um, what we're gonna do is, um, this time, and this time only to help kickstart the competition, um, we are going to, for this round, wait and see in the comments on Instagram and YouTube where we post this video. I want you to voice your approval for one of these two cents in terms of which one deserves to go on to the next round, and we will tally those votes um, from both places and see which one gets the popular vote. It's a lunchtime poll, like in Heather's. But here's the deal. Um, we can't do this every time. Um, so in the future, when we have, you know, upcoming tournaments, uh, 
send us your votes early. That'll make it much easier to swing the tie, and then it won't turn into a grudge match in the comments. Because reading internet comments is like a not the best part of my job. We love, I mean, obviously hearing input, but like I'm always like reading through one squint to die, like what is about what is about to poke me. So um, sound off. Uh, are you a are you team Magmel? Are you team Vice? Uh, and why, if you feel like it, but like we'll just count whatever everyone says and we'll make a tally and at the beginning of the next tournament video we'll let you know which one goes on to the next round. So winner, inconclusive! <laughs> so that's all the matchups we're doing for today, it's all the time we have for Tournament of Underdogs on BPAL, but we will be back on Friday reviewing Fruit Moon, and please scream inside your snake oil, and then we will get back to more tournamenting next week. Sound good? Thanks for playing, everybody. Uh, we remain your uh, perfume-sniffing civil servants. Huh, huh, huh.